Hey guys, even here, and we are 10 weeks out of Arnold Classic, so this video we will start with a physique update of William Bonek, one of the contenders, one of the favorites to actually win this show. So what do I see here? I do see a significantly smaller waist, right? I mean, it's not really much of a photo, you can't really see it clearly, but from this angle, I mean, take a look at his legs and the size of his flaring quads, the, 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 the fullness of the quads and everything just looks so much bigger than the, the, the size of the waist. It looks like he managed to, to make his waist look smaller. I don't know how. Is it just the angle, just uh, him flexing the abs very hard and pulling them inwards, you know what I mean? Doing sort of a vacuum while flexing the abs. Or maybe he actually made his waist smaller somehow. How? Maybe by downsizing, not eating a lot during this time period after the Mr. Olympia and, uh, you know, getting smaller but leaner and actually working on, on a practicing vacuum, doing the abs and stuff like that. And now, I don't know what the hell did he do, but his waist does look smaller. At least in this photo. It could be deceptive. I don't know, but that's just what I'm seeing right here. But if you talk about the overall muscularity, like how big, how full, how round, how massive as a bodybuilder William Bonac is these days... And uh, I would have to say that he seems downsized a little bit. I, I know, I know. I look at the arms. I mean, this guy was known for being... Uh, his nickname was... <laughs> Louis Marco nicknamed him Pitbull. Because he was that thick, that dense, that massive. Uh, on a short frame, he packed such a, such a crazy amount of muscle. Right now... I wouldn't really say that's the case. He doesn't seem that freaky. Take a look at this photo, for example. Right? You know what I'm saying? Look at this freaking madness right here. Yeah, I know. This is on stage. I'm not sure this is actually guest posing or him competing, but he's in a good shape and he's massive. He's big. Like, he is round, full. He packs so much muscle on his frame. Yeah, I know. This is 10 weeks out, so he has 10 more weeks to grow into the show. Is that the plan? I don't know, I mean, there is his coach, Abdullah, now he's trained by Abdullah, yeah, who's saying amazing, brother, and um, <laughs> I don't know how amazing this is, really, for, for old William Bonac, this is not really that big for, for William Bonac in the offseason, so take a look at him right here, and tell me, do you think, in 10 weeks, can he grow this much? What do you think? Can he really, maybe not grow, that's probably not the best word to use right now, but can he regain all this muscle and actually come this big and this full? I mean, his, his biceps were that big that they were actually touching his chest. He looked like he was on a ton of, of sight enhancement oil. Yeah, but now I, I wouldn't even say so because, I mean, take a look at his physique right here. Super, super thick, super dense, super massive. Yeah, I think William Bonek's best days are in the past. Here, he does not look like he is using any kind of oil, and he looks uh, athletic, he looks aesthetic, but is this going to be enough to like uh, beat some of the freaks? Like Brad Wilkin, who is bringing a, a ton of size, like Brandon Curry, who is also really freaking massive. There is an update of him, I'm going to show it to you in a second, but there is a bunch of really big guys... And if William Bonac doesn't, you know, if his muscle memory doesn't start working very soon and very good, if it starts working as well as it, as it should, he might, you know, come back and look as big as he once was. But I think those days are gone. I think the age took its toll. And I think, you know, nobody can beat Father Time, not even William Bonac. And I think these guys, I, I'm not saying he's done. He might still win pro shows. He can win pro shows, yeah. But to be a top two, top three, the Mr. Olympia... I think those days are gone, and uh, can he win the Arnold Classic, even though he's probably one of the favorites, one of the top two favorites, him and Brandon Curry, you know, based on their previous performance and their placing at the Mr. Olympia, I still, no, I don't think he actually has a chance of actually even being top two. Based on his look right now, I would say it's going to be hard for him to crack the top five. Here is somebody who he needs to beat if he wants to win the Arnold Classic and qualify for the Mr. Olympia since he is not qualified this year because he was 6th last year. And Brandon Curry right here, it's not really much of a physique update, but 
Man, take a look at that arm. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Take a look at those biceps and those triceps as well. This is Phil Heath arm, basically. I mean, he's on that level. Not the forearms, though. Nobody really has uh, forearms as impressive as Phil, especially that uh, Brachialis, Radio Brachialis area. Uh, but, like, the biceps... I mean, this is not much of a physique update, you can't really see a lot, but you know, you can grasp, you can get an idea of how massive Brandon Curry is right now at 10 weeks out. And if I was a betting man, I would definitely bet on him. I mean, he probably wouldn't gain so much because he's a favorite, he's the runner-up at the Mr. Olympia. But uh, I actually, I actually, if I was a betting man, I would bet on Brad Wilkin. Because I actually have a good feeling that he is going to make a huge leap. He might not, I mean, we can't be sure, he did only one show last year and he was second, yeah, but, uh, you know, it's the bold, it's a bold statement, bold prediction, it would be a bold bet, but I would say that. Anyways, as far as Brandon Curry, I can see him definitely easily beating Bonek, I don't think Bonek is actually a true challenge to, to Curry, you can see him right here, it's not much of a physique update, but you can see how big his arms are. And if I was William Bonac, I would be scared of this. I would be pretty much certain that I'm not winning the Tyrone Classic. And he's just gonna go for the highest spot possible. Because all the spots, all the top spots are gonna gain quite a lot of money. Because the prize money this year is crazy at the Arnold. So, you know, I, I think, you know, Brandon is gonna be probably, yeah, probably the winner. But, you know, I'm just predicting something crazy. And I'm saying Brad Wilkin is going to beat him. But that's not very likely, let's be honest. Alright, next we have a, let's say, very unusual physique update of uh, Ian Valier. It's been a long time since he updated us on his uh, on his uh, progress, let's put it that way. But uh, the, 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 these selfies of his that he was posting regularly back in the day uh, when he was prepping were always, I mean, he was always super shredded. Now, if you take a look at his physique, you will notice that he's not fat or anything like that. There is pretty much no fat on his body. Just, you know, he got softer. And that's what happens when you step off the gear. And he is having that approach. After the contest, he goes off of everything. I don't know if he's back on... I think he just started a cycle, basically. I think he, he announced that on YouTube. His off-season is... Uh, I think it just started. So his body is still looking pretty natural. I mean, it's not looking natural, but it's looking the way an enhanced body looks like when somebody when 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 it, when it steps off the gear for a, for a while, for a couple of months. Um, that's what Ian did, and so he got softer, he got uh, flatter. You can see the chest, especially that right pack. It looks tiny, right? It looks super flat. When he's on, on, when he's full blown, you know, when he has a good pump as well, he probably has a good pump here too. But when he's full blown, you know, on, on heavy amounts of food and <laughs> lots, of, lots of gear, he looks fuller, especially in that chest area. His arms are always big, like that's not an issue. I mean, really, he's just as big as he was when he was on a full blown cycle. It's just when you're on a cycle, your body, your body can take more glycogen. And that's why you look fuller and bigger. Maybe you retain some water as well, depending on what you're taking. And that's why you look bigger, and fuller. And when you go off of it, you know, you lose some you lose, you lose some poundage. But that's mainly like water and carbs, I mean, glycogen. So, no, obviously he didn't lose anything in those two months since uh, Mr. Olympia, maybe a little bit more. But uh, his receptors are now fresh. So once he starts pushing the gear and starts eating like a maniac and training harder... You can only imagine how much how much more impressive, bigger and crazier he's going to look. And I don't know what his plans are for 2022. I mean, he's not doing the Arnold Classic. That's, that's something I know. He might jump in. Who knows? He probably won't if he's looking like this at 10 weeks out. He could if he wanted to. But there isn't really a lot of room to progress. So he's probably going to do another show right before the Mr. Olympia and then the Mr. Olympia. And uh, I don't know, will he jump a couple of spots up next year the Mr. Olympia? He was 7th two times in a row. It's going to be tough, but I think best case scenario, he can be 6th. Whatever you guys think, tell me in the comment section down below. But if you talk about potential and what somebody can potentially do at a bodybuilding show, you got to mention this freak of the freaks right here, Good Vito. I believe he's, uh, I don't know, 25, something like that. Very, very young guy. 
And uh, as far as I know, from what I heard, uh, he's doing, he's gonna be transferring to MPC now, finally. And um, when I look at his photo, I, I, I don't see why he wouldn't be able to win the Mr. Olympia. Like, he has everything, and he's super massive. Like, take a look at, like, forearms, for example. Start with forearms. Massive, round, really, really big forearms. Biceps, peaky, and full. Triceps, same thing. Chest, it's not lacking. Lats are popping, like, insane. The waist is small, and those legs, I mean, uh, lateral head, the sweep is just popping out there. Uh, the vastus medialis, like uh, the teardrop, very impressive. Everything, basically. I mean, the deductors, everything. Very complete leg, very complete physique. Like there are pretty, there are pretty much no flaws in this physique. It's gonna be about fine polishment, you know. Not really growing, not a lot. Like he has a lot of time. He's very young. He just needs to fine polish this physique, you know. Create some details, deep cuts, and he can do that. I'm sure. And once he is like complete, why why he wouldn't be able to win the Mr. Olympia and be the best bodybuilder in the world? I don't know. I have no idea. I don't really see anything, any flaws. I think he has some sort of asymmetry in the back, but that's really not that big of an issue. Like there are pretty much no flaws in this guy. And this physique update right here, he looks ridiculous. I mean, this is just just makes me makes me go wow wow. He looks like a bigger, like like Dennis Wolf, with bigger arms, more fullness in the chest and the lats, lower lats than Dennis Wolf, bigger legs, just, just, just insane, an insane physique. I'm really curious if he's actually going to be doing the MPC and which show he's going to do and how well will he do compared to the other guys. But tell me what you guys think. How well would he compare against like top ten at the Mr. Olympia? Is he really that good, or am, am I exaggerating? I don't know, I'm just really under an impression because this guy looks like a monster. Anyways guys, that's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. For more videos like this, subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much guys for watching, all the best and bye bye.